Please. We better ring. Yes. Come to ours. We'll ring from there. You go. I'll send Marty over. close. It's my neighbour. Is that Max? What's it? She's dead. Thanks. Susanna Morrissey's dead. You what? She's lying dead on the floor over the way. Will you go over to Max? Poor fellow's had the shock of his life. What? Dead? Poor little mites. Uh, a watch pot never boiled, you know. He said he'd be back at nine. Yeah, well, maybe he's having a nice time. Meaning what? Meaning maybe that he's having a nice time. Away from me. Oh, forget it, Rach. He could have phoned, told me he was stopping out. It's hardly the end of the world now, is it, love? He said he's spending money that we haven't got. So you're just going to sit there sulking? Got it in one. For you now, Susanna. I lost her. I know. I've lost everything. Uh, come on. Come back to ours. No. I can't leave her. I, I can't leave her. There's nothing you can do for her now. to us, mate. Did you see her? The body? Yes. Did she look beautiful? No. How did she look? Dead. She looked dead. Were her eyes open or shut? Adele, will you see if Anthony's all right with Harry and Emma? Sleep at ours tonight, eh? He sugared it again. You think he'd know by now? Mm. Still no sign of Mike? He must have gone to a club. Why don't you come to bed, love? I can't remember the last time I went clubbing. Max looked really weird. Max? Yeah, he's just got into the mirrors with Marty. This time of night? I wonder what's going on. How old was Susanna, do you reckon? 45. Too young to die. And Max is very upset, so... Right? I'll get you the whiskey. Can't imagine what you're going through. <laughs> Sorry, mister. Thank you. How did she die? Susanna had an accident. Give the baby some orange juice. 
You all right? Yeah. I'll go and wait for the police. Me arm? I think I've got a cramp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll take it. Come on, sweetheart. Come to Auntie Di. There. There. Try and have a sip. It'll do you good. Do you need a hand? No. And stop quizzing Max. He's beside himself. Going over there again? I should decompose. Del! Maybe Sharon just died. What's got into you? We're only asking. Death's part of life, you know. It's the police. Twelve minutes, not bad. But go and help your mother. Dad, I've never seen a dead body. It's educational. It's morbid. I'm Marty Murray. Number nine. It's my wife who called you. It's very late, Emily. Nan, the busy are the two Zannas. Marty Money's just gone in with one of them. Time for bed, eh? I'm not tired. Tell you what, we'll put them in our room, then you can listen out for them, OK? Max will carry Harry upstairs, and then it's over to I you. I think it's... Yes, come on, darling. Mm -hmm. More busies have gone in. Come away from that window, flashing lights and everything. Farnham, I'd like to put my children to bed first. Yes, CID will be on the way. They've uh, got some questions for you. Yeah, come on through. Tea or coffee, officer? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just coming up for air. <laughs> you seem hungry. Oh, it's the first time since me and Susanna broke up. Mm. So your head's cabbaged. Mm. Would you get back with her? Make a fresh start? I'm very happy where I am, thanks. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm too old for sofas. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot. I can't get a thing out of that copper. Rachel said Max looked terrible. But what if something's happened to little Harry? Adele, what's going on? Hey, what's going on at Susanna's? She's dead. Susanna? Lying dead on the floor. No. Oh, my God. She can't be. Two mouthfuls of chicken madras when the phone rang. Titty cool. Sends her home in a taxi. Titty. Looked like she was going to lay her head upon me pillow. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think went on here, then? I reckon she had a rendezvous with the foot of the stairs. Women in heels. Mm. Bob? Sounds good to me. Glad to explain the bruises. Mm. So near and yet so far. Shame. Just about to get married. Yeah. Not quite what you had in mind, love, is it? Hey, feet first and a body bag. <laughs> Poor cow. <sighs> Flaming answer machine again. Do you reckon I should go around to the flat? No, let Jackie sleep. It'll keep till the morning. Nah, I suppose so. Poor little Harry. Mind you. What if something's happened to Mike? Uh, six points. That's all that's happened to our Michael. How do you know he could have had an accident or anything? I can't believe she's dead. Hi, she had a short but colourful life. God rest her. Shall we go downstairs? No, not yet. 
I can do all the talking. What am I going to do without her? Ali and Emma be okay? Yeah, they're only babies. Shall I tuck you in? My dad met you. Well, maybe Max will meet someone. Everyone needs a mum. And this was what time exactly? They'd gone midnight. Dia didn't pull up, so she legged across. I mean, to be honest, we thought Max was taking the... the mick, you know. Because of the children? But they both kicked off together. You couldn't hear yourself to think. I suppose they just wanted their mum. We received the emergency call at 12.15. Yeah, Di went across about ten past. Excuse me. Bed. Dad! So what do you reckon, uh, heart attack or what? I never speculate. She looked well dead to me. <sighs> Hugh McGlynn, CID. No offence, but I'm not pleased to meet you. Max is in bits up there. He's in no fit state to talk. Neither are you. She's pregnant. I'm OK, Mart. What do you need to know? Everything. What was Susanna like? Well, let's be honest about it. To be a Q halfway round a block of people who'd be glad to see the back of her. Imagine how Mick will feel. Mick Jono, Dr Roebuck. Hey, you don't think she was bumped off, do you? I don't think Darren or Mick... Mick loved the bones of her. Yeah, until she fell for the bedside charms of Dr Darren, then he hated the bones of her. You can hardly blame him for that. It doesn't make Mick a murderer. All I'm saying is it could have been one of them crimes of passion. Love turns to hate in the blink of an eye. You see, lovers... Does anyone want to top up? Lovers top each other all the time. You read it in the papers every day. Can't live with them, can't live without them. So, bump them off. You're Jack Yee today. Love, Susanna could be a very awkward woman at times. In fact, I would go so far as to say ruthless. Oh, whereas Jackie Flog and Harry offer a couple of grand, that's not ruthless, is it? That's just good business sense. Emily? Jackie wouldn't hurt a fly. It could have been anything. Um, an aneurysm, maybe. Heart attack? Well, a healthy-looking woman like Susanna? No. Your Margie went for her, didn't she? With good reason. <sighs> I don't believe this. Susanna's affair with my son wiped out half my family. Look, let's face it. A woman like Susanna was a magnet for trouble. I mean, she spent half her life on her back, didn't she? She's Harry's mum and she was your neighbour for years. Show some respect. Oh, I'm very sorry. Just got carried away. If only. He said Susanna's in the kitchen, so I went in. Go on. I didn't really know what to expect. I thought maybe she'd hurt herself or something. I couldn't see her at first. Look, the poor woman's dead and... Well, my wife's worn out, can't this wait? I've got enough to be going on with. But I would like Max to identify the body. The divorce, you say? Yeah. She was supposed to be remarrying a couple of weeks back. So I believe. Mick Johnson. Uh, he lives just across the way. She stood me up at the salon. I could have murdered her. We were calling her for everything. What kind of mother just dumps her kids? A dead one? Their mum's in heaven, you know. I hope so. I know so. She didn't want to leave them, did she? No. 
No, she would never do that to them. It was an accident. When they get bigger, they'll know she had an accident. They'll be OK with that. My mummy left me on papers. You can keep it. Oh, well, thank you. Minty put Jesus' feet off there. That'll make it all the more special and precious. We turn our rest grant on to Susanna, O oh Lord, and let per perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. 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 Mick. Mick. I haven't got anything. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Relax. Meg! I'm fine. I've had the snip. Turn the light out, Tiger. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. It's fine, Mr. Farnham. Um, but I would be grateful if you'd identify the body. I'll come with you. No, I'll go. You get your head down. Ready when you are, Mr. Farnham. Can't get me a drowned. Those poor children. Max is going to have his work cut out. We could help with Harry, if that's what he wants. We could all pitch in. I tell said she was just lying there dead. Who are you crying for, him? Susanna. Really? Not so long ago, you would have been pleased to hear she was dead. I've only just made me peace with her. Is that the truth? Yeah. You think I killed her, don't you? Oh, my God, you do? Well, it crossed my mind for a second. It struck me that Ron's queue round the block started next door in our bungalow. Well, you can hardly blame me, Emily. You made that woman's life a misery for the best part of a year. I know that, don't you think I know? Oh, come here. I know you were still grieving for your dad. I may as well have killed her. I've wanted to so many times. And I've been lying in bed. Laying there, thinking if I'm going to make a pay, how I'm going to get her back. You and me both. However much I drummed into you and Nicky that Greg's death was an accident, I hated her with all my heart. Worse, with all my soul. Matt? At least you were open about it. I was a hypocrite. Every time I clapped eyes on her, I wished her dead. My only son was lying in the ground while she was unloading the shop in, having her hair done, flitting around in a pretty dress. Why wasn't she suffering? But the police, the bit how she didn't go to them. I know. But I'd have done anything to keep you out of prison. I hated feeling beholden to my son's killer. Having to thank her for being compassionate, for doing the decent thing. Susanna Morrissey, decent! Oh, I'm sorry, Em. This hatred's eaten away at me like a cancer. Didn't want you and Nicky to see it. Nan, I've forgiven her. You've got to or not. I can't. The only sadness I can feel is for their children. 
and for my dead son's children. I'm not one bit tired. Me neither. Brilliant excuse for not doing that essay, though, isn't it? I think Mum's dead, you know. I know, yeah. Awful sad. You know, when you die, everything slackens. Everything. All your orifices start oozing gunge. I don't want to know. And gas. I want to go to sleep. And corpse is right. Sometimes they sit up in bed and let out a cry for help. Uh, as if. No word of a lie. They sit bolt upright. See air coming off the diaphragm. Right. Only it sounds like a wail from beyond the grave. How do you know this? Just do. You going to bed? I'm shattered. Shall I leave the light on? I'm not bothered. Save Lecky then, shall we? No. Leave it on. Don't have nightmares. Hi, Barry. 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 Hi, Barry.
Last night, I caught Mick Johnson in bed with my mum whilst his fiance, the so-called love of his life, was lying dead across the way. Yeah, but he didn't know that. <sighs> Nicky, I don't care what he did or didn't know, and I don't need your lectures. Mick Johnson took advantage of my mum on my 21st birthday party. He's lucky I didn't cave his face in for him. I'm so sorry, Max. We were divorced. I know. It won't make me grieve any the less. It, it can't hurt any more than this. You still loved her? With all my heart. Did Susanna know that? Well, I, I think she did. In fact, yes. I know she did. That's good. What is? It's good she died knowing that you loved her. Oh, God. You're not up to talking about this. I'm sorry. No, don't be, no. Um, I've got to be strong. Especially for the children's sake. Do you want me to call the police? Put them off? No. No, I think it's time I face them. Get things off my chest. So, what do you reckon? Shall I ring her? It's still early. Yeah, but our Jacqueline's got a right to know, you know. She has got a vested interest in that family. You make little Larry sound like a business deal. Well, that's what he was, in a way. But now Susanna's out the picture, well, our Jackie's got a chance to change things round. The woman's not even buried yet, and you're plotting all sorts. Anthea, love, this is important. That Larry's off flesh and blood. <sighs> you gonna get that? No. Do you want me to get it? No. It might be important. Um. <clears throat> Maybe it wasn't that important after all. So, you got anything planned for today? <sighs> yeah. I promise me I'm going to do some chops for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can call on later if you like. You know, I would. Like, well, that's settled then. So, what's things going on here? Just a bit we get all girly. Start talking about commitment on me. No, I'm not like that. Yeah, what are you like then? Um, independence, I suppose. At least that's what everyone else says about me. Yeah, but you nearly gave it all up for Nathan. Nearly. What was it then? Too much to leave behind? Partly, yeah. Yeah, but there's nothing else to keep you here, is there? Messy little fella, aren't you? Hey, there. <laughs> <sighs> well, there's the health club. So you're telling me you gave up high society life for the health club in Manor Park? Well, I didn't love Nathan enough. That's the beginning and the end of it. All oh, right. So what about you? What about me? Oh, Spill. I want to know it all. Yeah, well, the thing is with me, Jackie, what you see is what you get. <laughs> All right. Oh, morning, Mick. Can I get you some sweets? Just a cup of coffee, please, Nick. Did you sleep? Not a wink. Oh, not surprised. It was a terrible shock. You can say that again. Sorry? You all feel terrible for Susanna. I mean, I know she wasn't exactly my best friend, but she was important to you. You loved her. Just let me go. Yeah. I'm sure she regretted it. We all do things we regret. You got something to say? Well, I'm not the one who should be saying something. And what's that supposed to mean? Well, I don't hear you saying sorry. Jerome! And what exactly should I be saying sorry for? For taking advantage of my mother. Don't start, Jerome, not today. That's just it. I didn't start it. You did with her. I'm only going to say this once, and then I want the subject dropped once and for all. 
Your mother is an adult. She knew exactly what she was doing and what she wanted. So don't you start behaving like some stupid kid in the playground. I won't believe this. I'm warning you, Jerome, not another word. Oh, aye, aye, what's all this? Oh, sorry, I thought you'd gone to work. Yeah, obviously. I had the night shift last night, so I'm knackered. Mm. Obviously not the only one. See Missing you already. Shut up, you. All right, Mr Dixon? Mrs Dixon? Oh, yeah. Morning, Roberts. Uh, been visiting the doctor, have you? Uh, your Jackie, actually. You must have called really early. Yeah, something like that. Is she all right? Yeah. Uh, no bad news or nothing? No, not that I know of. Oh, good. I'll catch you later. <sighs> That's all I need, me dad. I was checking up on you, making sure you've been a good little girl. I'll get it. Yeah, I found Ted last night. Apparently she'd been there for ages. Oh, I can't believe it. The poor woman. Oh, oh I better tell Max. He already knows. How oh, come? Cool. He was only found her. Oh. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Jackie, guess what? <sighs> Susanna's dead. Beg your pardon? That was Victoria. She says that they found her body last night. Can't believe it. Take your time, Mr. Farnham. Susanna's death. It was all my fault. Get invited in then. Of course, yeah. Come on. What are you feeling? It's very common. I see it all the time. But if I'd been faithful to her, I'd been happy with what I had. I'm divorced myself, Mr. Farnham. See me kids on the weekend. Same old story. Couldn't keep it in me pants. Typical man, eh? Why do we do it? I wish I knew, mate. I can understand why you feel guilty. But it's not your fault she died. <laughs> I don't know that I can carry on. You've got two kids. You haven't got a choice. They need you. Mr Farnham, we don't want to take up any more of your time than we have to. Now... According to Miss Shadwick, on the night your ex-wife died, the pair of you left her house at 9 p.m. Is that correct? Yes. One of my men has just spoken with your lodger and Mr. Mr. Powell. He tells us you got back to your flat at about five past nine and that you watched the video together. Yes. Mr. Johnson tells us your ex-wife was in something of a state that night. He'd find out she'd been unfaithful, called off the wedding. We believe Miss Morrissey had been drinking. Well, she'd had some champagne and um, a few glasses of wine. How would you describe Susanna Morrissey? I mean, I'm getting a picture of someone who was rather highly strung, emotional. She was a, a, a passionate woman, yes. It's a sad case. There's no doubt about that. We can only offer you our sympathies, Mr. Farnham. <sighs> Remember what I said. Your children need you. If you can't be strong for yourself, do it for their sake. Well, um, what happens now? Isn't there some sort of investigation? This is the investigation, Mr. Farnham. 
Don't worry. I don't foresee any complications. Just another tragic accident. An accident? Is that what you think it was? I can't say so officially. We can only gather the evidence, but I'd be amazed if it went any other way. Thanks for your time, Mr. Farnham. <sighs> that night, I'd worked myself up into a right lot of that. After the 30,000 back. You're joking. She threw it back on me face, of course. Well, it looks like fate saved you the bundle. What do you mean? Well, now that Susanna's gone, our little laddie's gonna be needing the mum. And it's not that we have to look very far. The woman's hardly cold. Look, Anthea, I don't care what anybody says, OK? Harry's welfare comes first, and Jacqueline, you want to get round to Maxie's and have a word with him. Sort out some proper access. Dad, I can't even think about that right now. I still can't believe that she's dead. Yeah, neither can I. It just seems so incredible. Yeah, well, it's gonna happen to us all one day. Yeah, you'll have me in an early grave, I've no doubt of that. Come on, let's leave Jackie and Darren in peace. Well, you can say what you like about Susanna, but she certainly knew how to enjoy herself. Half the men in Manor Park can testify to that. <laughs> Home. What? What do you think? I think it's my fault she's dead. Don't be like this, Mick. Like what? I want to help you. Why? Because we had some drunken fumble last night while my woman was lying dead a few yards away. You're not responsible for Susanna's death. Oh, I know. If I'd given her another chance, she'd still be alive today. You don't know that. She's been unfaithful. So what? It's not like I can cast the first stone in that department. Of course. It's only women who are sluts. Is that what you think I am? He didn't need much persuading last night, and neither did I. Look, I'm sorry, Fanny, but after what's happened, I can hardly bear to look at you. Police were around before. Asking all sorts of questions. <laughs> and no matter what I said, I, I couldn't help but make a sound. Scatty and mixed up. Unstable. She wasn't like that. She was... Not when we were alone together. She was. She was warm. And beautiful. Gentle and loving. So why did I forget that then when she... when she told me what she'd done? Asked me to forgive her. She would be alive. And we could be happy. Why are you here, Vonnie? I suppose I thought, after last night, there might be a chance for us. You thought wrong. So I'm just making a fool of myself. Last night was a mistake. What's going on? I, I was just going. Your mum's just leaving. Yeah, well, hold on, I'll give you the lift. You're all right. I'll call you later. What have you done to her now? She was beautiful, though, wasn't she? I wonder what she looks like now. Oh, I don't even think about it. It's over, isn't it, Nick? Yeah, it is. You're the one who said go and sow me wild oats. Yeah, but not with my mother. Well, it's not like I have to force her. I swear, Mick, if you don't shut it... You what? I'll shut it for you. Come on, then, big man. Mick, I don't want to fight with you. Why? Scared it might spoil your looks. Well, that must run in the family, because your mother's a very good-looking woman. I'm gonna cave your face in! Hey! Will you two just grow up? But he's wired me up big time! Join the real world, Jerome. Adults have sex, even your mother. Mickey, I'm gonna kill him! Do you know, just sit down. He's lucky you walked in when you did. You can't hide behind your girlfriend's skirt forever. You know what, Mick? I'm surprised at you. What do you mean? Jerome is a 21-year-old lad. Everyone knows they can't keep their pals a dry. But I'm... I'm surprised at you. She was threatening to lodge a formal complaint against me, claiming that I had 
sexually assaulted her in the walk-in centre. Uh, it was a, a total fabrication. She wanted us to get together. She said that if I did what she wanted, that she would drop the complaint and make Johnson. What did you say? I managed to persuade her that it was madness. Um, when I left, I believed that she wanted to marry Mick. I wish to God she had. Mr Johnson tells me it was you who told him about Ms Morrissey's infidelity. Yeah. Why did you do that? Well, I had a baby for Susanna. So must the Farnham tell me. I was convinced that Susanna was mistreating Harry and I wanted him back. I see. To be honest, I've been kidding myself since Harry was born. I tried to pretend that I didn't have feelings for him, but I did. I do. Susanna wasn't really a bad mother, you know. I think she was just going through some kind of midlife crisis. But she didn't seem to be coping. And I didn't even know about the pressure she was putting on Darren. And when you left her? Oh, she was really wound up. We had a terrible row. And you, Doctor? Calmer, but brittle. I couldn't help but think that um, she was on the edge. Are you saying she was suicidal? No. No, I don't think so. She loved her children. I know that now. She wouldn't have abandoned them. But she was wound up, on edge, and she'd been drinking. I've seen it before. Uh, an accident waiting to happen. I, I should have read the signs and given her something to calm her down. That sounds like 2020 hindsight, Doctor. But you do think it was an accident? As I tell Mr Farnham, that's not for me to decide. You'll have to wait for the inquest for the final verdict. But if it was up to you? I put my money on accidental death, yeah. So what are you saying? That there are suspicious circumstances? There were plenty of people with a motive. Like who? Mick, for the way that she treated him. She was practically stalking the doctor, apparently. And Jackie wanted Harry back, you know that. And Emily Shadwick, well, she hated her guts for ages. Then, of course, there's, uh, there's me. You? I didn't want her to marry Mick. I couldn't bear the thought of it. Yes, but Susanna told you the wedding was off. Yes, I know that, but... So you didn't have a motive. <sighs> Listen to us talking about motives and suspicious circumstances. The police got it right. Susanna's death was an accident. And no matter how angry anyone was with her before it happened, no one's happy to see her gone. It's a tragedy, pure and simple. <laughs> Pure and simple. If you're feeling guilty, Max, it's only because you wish you'd be nicer to her when she was alive. That's only natural. You're forgetting what you told me earlier. She died knowing that you loved her. Yes. Yes, she did. So what happens at the inquest? Well, tomorrow's just a formality. Um, they should adjourn for a few weeks to gather up the evidence and get the results of the post-mortem. I see. Should all be very straightforward, though, yeah? Should be. You know, these are the worst cases. When there are kiddies left behind. Maybe that little boy would be glad he had two mothers after all. Thanks for your time. See ya. Afternoon. What did they want? Susanna Morrissey's been found dead. What did he mean about the kid having two mothers? Um, I should check in down at the walk-in centre. I'll, uh, I'll leave you two to it. I just feel so lonely. You know? First our Gemma goes. Then somebody. I don't know if I've missed them, you know. Holly was only here once every blue moon. I pin so much on my own, Susanna. Too much. What about my mum? Where does she fit into all this? She doesn't. What did you say to upset her earlier? Your mum came round looking for some sort of relationship the morning after my woman was found dead. What do you expect me to say? I expect you to treat her with a bit of respect, not pin her off like some cheap one-night stand. You better work out just what it is you're angry about, Jerome. The fact that I had sex with your mother or the fact that I don't want to go out with her. Because at the moment, you're not making a lot of sense. You know what, Mick? 
I've seen a new side to you today, and I can't say that I like it. Now, we hope it's the grief talking, because if it's not, you and me have come to the end of the road. He didn't mean any of that, Mike. Didn't he? I'm getting used to it now, Nick. The people that I love, I drive away. Max? Oh. Lance, hi. I'm sorry I didn't come home last night. Oh, you don't have to apologise. Not after the shock you've had. Diane did try to ring. Oh, no, yet she told me. I feel that guilty, I really do. What? I think when I went into the house. When we had to go into the kitchen. Could have saved you the nightmare of having to see her like, like that. You're not to blame. I know how much you loved her. Oh, I can't imagine how you must have felt when you found her. I had to give her anything to spare you that pain. You're wrong, Nance. It was right for me to discover the body. Max, I am. Um, I've just heard the news. I'm so sorry. Oh, really? I thought you'd be glad now she's out of the way. I would never have left that night if I'd known what was going to happen, but I... Who could have predicted such a horrible accident? Do you think it was an accident? I do. Police seem to agree. Oh, how very convenient. What are you saying? <laughs> seems to suit a lot of people that Susanna's death was accidental. You think it wasn't? I know a lot of people wanted Susanna out of the way, you included. And it suits you very well that she is now decked. Oh, well, maybe he's got a point there. And did she fall or was she pushed? Maybe it wasn't an accident after all. I can't believe you kept this from me. Yeah, well, I didn't think that it was important, not yet. You took 30,000 quid to give your baby away. What kind of person does that make you? Yeah, but at the time, I thought that I was helping Max and Susanna. I really did. But now I'm... Well, I'm not so sure. Now I... I don't think I was just being selfish. <sighs> this shouldn't change the way we feel about each other. Harry is Max's child. Look, I can't cope with this now. <sighs> I'm still taking it all in. Yeah, but I told you the truth. I can't we just... Go from there. You only told me because you had to. Look, Jackie, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to have a think about this. Well, don't go. We can talk this through. I'll give you the ring. If you get sent down, it could wreck the rest of your life. Look, everything that happened was my fault. Look, if this is about your mum, you write this about my mum. Thanks for being the best mum in the world. <laughs> what married woman? Someone Shelley's been after for ages. That's all in store for Friday's episode, and there's another hour long Brookside next Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Lena Moe is on for the cost of revealing a secret is a trail of damaged relationships in North Square. thinking about the inquest. Yeah, among other things. I keep going over it in my head about the last time I saw Susanna. Wishing that I hadn't said all them things. You're not the only one. Wish I could turn the clock back. I saw Max last night. He was in a terrible state. Kept saying how he didn't think Susanna's death was an accident. What? You think someone killed her? Oh, to be honest, I don't think he really knew what he was saying. I was thinking of going along there this morning. 
Well, it's going to be a 15-minute routine procedure. Yeah, I know that, but I just felt it might be like a mark of respect to Susanna going there, that's all. And I was wondering if you fancy coming with me. OK. Let me just ring Katie to make sure she can cover the walk-in centre. Morning. Morning. You gonna go to the inquest today, Mick? I thought I'd give it a miss. That's a surprise. Why'd you say that? Well, she's been dead for a while now. I'm surprised you can even remember what she looks like. Officially, I'm nothing to do with Susanna. And I'm sure Max would prefer to get through this morning by himself. Well, it used to be so tactful or considerate. Look, if this is about your mum. She writes it's about my mum. I said I'm sorry, what more can I do? It was a mistake. Your mum and I both agreed that. No, you agreed it was a mistake because my mum didn't have any say in the matter. Look, Jerome, I think we need to have a talk. Well, I don't. I'll see you later. <laughs> Morning, gorgeous. Morning. Um, any sunshine? Oh, not a peep. Unless she's been spending the night with the mysterious Mrs X. Hey, Dave, keep your voice down, will you? I'm sure Shelley knows you'd have told her. <sighs> Shelley goes spare if she'd known I'd told anyone. Well, I suppose being a dyke, she doesn't understand that girls tell their boyfriends everything. Dave, I want you to promise me, right here and now, that you will not breathe a word of this to anyone. I just think it's a bit rough on Lindsay. Uh, especially Lindsay. Morning. Morning. One egg or two. Come give us a twelve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to get you something really special for your birthday this year. Not me dad not being around. Was there anything coming to post? No, but I wasn't really expecting anything. Well, maybe he's going to wait till we see him to give you a prezzy. Yeah, maybe. In what time is your dentist appointment? Oh, well, it's at half nine. I'd better get going. But with a bit of luck, I should be back about half eleven. Then we can go straight to the Aussie and then I'm taking you and the kids for a nice lunch. Lens, there's no need. Mum, it's your birthday. If anyone deserves a bit of spoiling, it's you. And I promise, no moaning about Shelley or Wind, and we're going to have a dead nice day. Thanks, love. I love you. Thanks for being the best mum in the world. <laughs> it's Jackie's birthday. 47. <laughs> I can't believe either of us at that age. Mind you, I'm wondering if she'll bother coming in again after last time. Had a bit of a Barney. Well, I say Barney. More like me, completely losing it. And telling her I'd never loved her. And how it was all her fault I'd ended up in here. All her fault I'd lost my job as a teacher that she'd just gone and wrecked my chances cos she couldn't bear to see me make something of myself. And, you know, the joke is... it's probably been the other way round all our lives. Me holding her back. Me being the millstone round her neck. She could have done anything she wanted, my Jackie, you know. She's an amazing woman. Oh, yes. Whatever you hurl at her, she copes. You can push her down to rock bottom and she comes bouncing back. Boing! Boing! <laughs> Never catch her ending up in a place like this. She's one of life's survivors. And maybe I resented that. The fact that she's the strong one. She's the one that's held it all together. I know I've been going on these last few weeks about getting away from her, starting again. But that's just me, you know, when in doubt, run. I do love her. I mean, if she went, I'd be lost. 
be like losing part of me. Well, all of me, really. Just hope she can forgive me. Hey, where's Max? Oh, he's gone to film Lisa and Daphne. All right. I'm glad we came this morning. He's really not in a good state, is he? Did you get through? Uh, answer machine, so I presume they, they must have left. Oh, there's Lisa now. What the hell is she doing here? I'm sorry I'm late. Mum had a mild stroke last night. A stroke? A stroke's nothing, believe me, pet. Used to happen two or three times a day in shady pines. That's the retirement home I was in before I came to live with our Raymond. How is Daphne? She's at home. The doctor's been to see her. And her neighbour's looking after her till I get back, but I tell you, I feel terrible leaving her. Hello, Bev, it's Kitty. Bev? <laughs> yeah, she's asked me to tell her all the news. <laughs> Don't mind me, you just get on with your conversation. I'm just talking to Max and his friends. Oh, there's a very good turnout. Jackie's here, Jackie Dixon, and the nice doctor fella. I don't believe this. Why is she here for Susanna's inquest? The family of the late Miss Morrissey. Right, that's us. Ben, looks like we're on the move, finally. Don't you think you should switch that thing off? Oh. How are you feeling about the hearing tomorrow? A bit nervous, I suppose. To be honest, I haven't really thought about it. Well, that's good. Is it then? Susanna's inquest today. Yeah. I just wish I'd have been able to make it up to her properly. Um, look, I know this might sound callous, but I really think you've got to forget about Susanna and her inquest. Got to think about yourself, about your healing tomorrow. Right. All you've got to do is stick to your statements and you'll be fine. <sighs> what about Tim then? How long is he going to get? Because of me. Tim wanted you to change your statements. I know, but it doesn't make me feel any better. I just wish I could see him before tomorrow. I just keep thinking that it's going to be the last chance I get to speak to him. Do you want me to sort something? Could you? Where's Lynn's today? Not working then? No, she's got an appointment at the dentist. That's okay then. Oh, I was just a bit worried about her, that's all. I know she's taken the breakup with Shelley pretty badly. Mm, she told you about it, did she? Well, we've always been good mates, Lindsay and me. Right, that's uh, £12.95, please. Mind you, if you ask me, she's better off out of it. What do you mean? Well, stringing Lindsay along while all the while she's been chasing this old unmarried woman. What married woman? Oh, uh, I'm sorry if I uh, put my foot in it. What married woman? Someone Shelley's been after for ages. She wasn't getting anywhere, so she decided to make a go of it with Lindsay. Then this older woman changes her mind. Shelley spends one night with her and decides to dump Lindsay. Uh, and who's been telling you all this? Shelley? Bev. Bev? Well, I think Shelley tells her quite a bit, and obviously Bev tells me. I'm really sorry. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. I think it's so unfair on Lindsay, though. At least if she knew Shelley had been doing the dirty on her. And I think the kindest thing you can do for Lindsay right now is to keep your smutty gossip to yourself. She's got enough to cope with without feeling the entire parade is discussing her private life. OK. Point taken. We have now received the pathologist's report, and it would appear Miss Morrissey's injuries were consistent with a fall downstairs. Hello, Bev. I was just about to get to that bit now. I'll let you know as soon as I tell us the call of death. The cause of actual death was a fracture to the skull, resulting in a blood clot to the brain, which would have allowed Miss Morrissey to briefly regain consciousness in order to call for help 
before losing consciousness once more. Under the circumstances, we are not treating Miss Monashi's death as suspicious or seeking anyone in connection with further inquiries. Tragedy is, if Miss Morrissey had reached her mobile, she may have been alive today. May I offer my condolences to the family of Miss Morrissey? It's all over. Adjourn till the 26th of January. Aye, well, if you can get a few days off, it'd be nice we could both go together. Hey, that Farnham fella collapsed, you know. Max, you all right? No, not really. Well, at least it must have put your mind at rest knowing that Susanna's death was definitely an accident. There's nothing definite about it, is there? Max, if the police had the slightest suspicion, they'd be carrying on with the investigation. We haven't had the toxicologist report, so we'll see what turns up there. Probably nothing we don't already know. No, I'll just empty my waterworks and we'll be off, shall we? See you in the morning, June. Bye. See ya. How did you get on? Oh, I had to get two fillings and I've got to go back next week for some root canal work. Uh -oh. Hi. Hiya. Oh. So you got it then? Got what? What do you mean? Well, Shelley and I went into town together for your Prezi. It was her idea, actually. I wanted yeah. to get you a leather, but she said you prefer suede. And it really does suit you. You look great. Happy birthday. There's the bus, excuse me. Yeah, then. We've got to rush off, you know. Go to my dad and I'll see you. Sorry. It's OK. See ya. Shelly, I might be off, you know, can't fight me in battles. I know that. I just don't like seeing that one thinking she can hit you and get away with it, that's all. Hi. Hi, Mick. Did you fancy a pussy? No, I'll sort myself on, Lisa. Listen, Mick, um, I was wondering, can I ask you a favour? Yeah, go on. Do you think you could talk to Jerome about all this business, you know, about his mind? I really think you've got to talk to him yourself. You saw how he was this morning with me. Well, I can't understand how he feels, you know. I just want to let him know that it's got nothing to do with this man. Mm. She's a really great woman, and yeah, another time, another place, who knows, but right now, I mean, it's just a little Susan. All right. I'm not stopping. I just come to get this. Why, where are you going? Buddy. Are you going to go with the bus? Yeah, why? Come around with you. I'm gonna go to the garage. I need a five minute break from all this. <laughs> Can we get you anything, Min? Uh, just get us some milk, eh? Okay. See you in a minute. Mm. Sam? I don't believe he really wants to see you. Well, I don't think that's a good idea, do you? Look, she's getting herself all waked up with this heathen, and so I just think she'd really appreciate a visit. Yeah, and what about Ray and your nan? And that kitty one? They're all out for the day, so. Do you want to just go over for ten minutes? Yeah, OK. Tim, when I say ten minutes, I mean ten minutes. I do not want me nan coming back and catching you and all them up to all kinds. As if. How's the therapy going, Dad? Yeah, not bad. Getting there. Bit hard to start off with, like, cos I thought the therapist would be asking me all sorts of questions instead of just sitting there in silence, waiting for me to do all the talking. <laughs> What happens if you can't think of anything to say? I suppose you just sit there and wait for the hour to be up. Which so far hasn't happened. Because I take notes after each session so I can work out what I'm going to talk about in advance. Plan it. Oh, that reminds me. Happy birthday, love. Mm. I know it's not much. But... Thanks, love. I made that in art class. Well, when I say I made it, I didn't actually make it girl in the class. She did the design on the front. I did the lettering, you know. What do you reckon? I think I've got a new career for myself when I get out of here. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. Actually, the girl who did that etching, she's a journalist. Got a fella down there next door but one. He used to be a stockbroker before he had his breakdown. But you're not supposed to say breakdown these days. Personality fragmentation. I think you'll find that's the correct terminology for that little thing. 
Sorry I didn't get you a present, love. Maybe when I come out for me visit, we can pick something out for you then. Mum. Mum. Yeah, I was just saying sorry I didn't get you a present. Don't you be worried about getting me presents. Just you get yourself better. That's all I want right now. I haven't half missed you. I've missed you too. Looking forward to seeing you, Mum? Yeah. Are you okay about tomorrow? Not really, no. Why not? Because I don't think it's right that you should be taking all the blame for this. But we decided all this. <sighs> I know. But I've changed my mind. I want to check my statement. Thanks, I definitely need this. I hope I haven't messed you around completely today, but I just don't think I could have faced sorting out Susanna's clothes. Well, I must confess I wasn't looking forward to it either. I remember doing it when Dad died. I really think it's the worst part of the whole business, going through their underwear and socks and false teeth and all those things they wouldn't want you to see, then bundling them all in a bin liner like they'd never existed. Well, we can do it uh, when we're ready, in our own time. So why do you think Susanna's death wasn't an accident? Well, I think there were a good many people who hated her. Possibly. But like the police say, there's no reason to believe there was any foul play, is there? It's not going to help me if you retract your statement. That's not true, and you know it. If I say it was all my fault, you might get a couple of months instead of a couple of years. If you change your statement, you could get a custodial. Fine. No, it's not fine. If you get sent down, it could wreck the rest of your life. Look, everything that happened was my fault. Yeah, and I could have said no. You did, but I made you do them. Look, Em, will you listen to me? If you change your mind in that courtroom, we're finished. But I'm doing it for you. No buts. That's what I want you to do. So we're gonna do it? You better go. No, not until you promise that's what you're gonna do. Emily? Do you promise? Emily! I'm coming now. Well? I promise. You better. I love you. I love you too. Look, I'm sorry Mum and I gave you a hard time over the years about Susanna. Well, that's all right. I mean, she was your sister. Yes, a sister I didn't always like. And someone who probably wasn't the easiest person to live with. It's hardly a saint. I mean, I'm sure she told you that. I always say it takes two to break up a marriage. <laughs> well, I suppose the most pressing thing now we've got the burial certificate is to sort out the funeral. Well, if you're happy, I mean... I could sort out all those arrangements for you. I've got to say, if you wouldn't mind, it would be a big help right now. Oh, I'd like to. There was something else I wanted to ask you. I was wondering if you hadn't any objections. If I could move back into number seven. Max, it's fine by me. If you feel you can cope with going back there. <sighs> Actually, it's the one place I'd like to be at the moment. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mom. Happy birthday to you. Oh, <laughs> Lynn, you shouldn't have gone to all this. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's a special day for a special mum. Mm -hmm. Come make a wish. Just one. Can I play them out? Since when has it been your birthday? Of course she can if she wants to. Go on, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly's a bit busy right now, love. So does that mean I can have the piece with the chocolate button on the top? Hands off or we're going straight home. Um, Linz, I'm just going to pop the ladies, OK? Mum, you're not going to have a go at Shelly, are you? Just going to spend a penny, that's all.
do you think you're playing us? What do you mean? I had that Dave one in the garage at lunchtime. All concerned for Lindsay. And wanting to tell me how you've been sleeping with this older married woman behind her back. I never told Dave Burns anything about us. No, but apparently you told Bev. Who else have you been opening your big gob to, Ron Dixon? Look, Jackie, I have feelings as well in all this. I needed someone to talk to. So you picked Bev. Well, obvious choice, isn't she, when you need someone to keep a secret? Well, she's always been very loyal to me. Don't you think you've caused enough trouble for me and Lindsay? Haven't I got enough to deal with right now with our Jimmy in hospital? Not knowing if he's ever going to lead a normal life again without you shooting your mouth off all round the parade? Jackie, I was just really hurt when you turned me down. You make me sick. Do you know that? Why? Because I fell in love. Because she didn't care how much pain you caused to our Lindsay. So can't you just forget all about it and leave me and my family alone? I mean, how do you think our Lindsay would feel if she did what you'd been saying? So what have you been saying? So why exactly did she finish with me then? Do you want me to spell it out? You've got competition. So you'll be having a home soon, then? Who? Susanna. Do people still do that? They wouldn't want to see you go to prison, either. What happened? They put me away in one. I don't think I could go. <laughs> and the story continues on Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Next, Force putting you straight about stripes in She's Gotta Have It. Found her minutes ago, Jess. Got loads of time yet, now. I just want to get this over with. <sighs> Me too. Oh, don't worry, everything will be fine. Oh, as long as I stand up and say it was all time to Tim, you mean? Well, he was a lot older than you. He should have known better. We've been through this already. Oh, so what do you want me to do? Just stand up there like butter wouldn't melt in my mouth and say it was all Tim's fault. Is that it? And what's the alternative, Emily? Tell the truth, the whole truth. That's the oath, isn't it? And you go to prison? I'll probably go anyway. It's not like I'm up for robbing sweets in a shop, is it? Do you ever stop to think of the effect on this family if you'll carry on? Do you think you're the only one who wants to lash out because of what happened to your dad and Jason? No. If you go to prison, it would shatter this family, not just you. So stop being so selfish. I'm not. I'm just thinking of Tim, that's all. If you have to do the right thing by this family today, we have got to put this whole thing behind us and get on with our lives. OK? Yeah. I've made you all studies. These core things can drag on something chronic, take it from me. And you'll be needing all your strength, Bonnie lass. Oh, that's very kind of you. Not at all. I'd do out for you, Emily. And Nicky, too, of course. Did she get swapped by aliens overnight? You must have. Um, I'll sort that out for you, if you like. You what? I'll stick it in the machine for you later. Uh, no, no, no. There's, there's no need. You sure? You must have loads to sort out at the moment. Look, I was going to mention this uh, later, but I suppose now's as good a time as any. You mention what? I'm moving out. Oh, well, thanks for telling us, Max. Well, I'm telling you now, aren't I? Yeah, well, who's going to pay the rent on this place? Well, of course, this was always going to be a, a temporary arrangement. Oh. oh, well, that's charming, that is. Well, I don't think you have any room to complain. Look, where are you going? I'm, um, I'm moving back into number seven. To Susanna's? That's right. For how long? Well, I haven't worked that out yet. Max, are you sure you want to be living there, you know, after everything that's happened? Well, it's more for the children's sake, really. They've had enough upheaval as it is uh, without moving in here full time. And, um, well, as you can see, it was always going to be cramped. Too right, it's even as it is. You're definite, then? I'm positive. It's for the best all round. Well, you know where we are if you need us. 
Even humble animals, we're drawn to the star. Even humble animals, we're drawn to the star. Hey, Leonardo, you'll be late for school at this rate. <sighs> OK. How's it going? I don't have much to work with, really. Mr McDonald wrote it this year. Keeps on putting these mad Scottish words in. Nobody even knows what he's going on about. I suppose we'll just have to work with what you've got, then. <sighs> you feeling OK? Is that obvious? Just look a bit knackered, that's all. <laughs> Thanks very much. I didn't mean it like that. Why the sudden concern? You are going to come and see me tonight, aren't you? I mean, you're not going to go all tired on me. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Oh, that'll be an in. Maybe you need a bit more in your life. I mean, what about your career? I work in a petrol station. It's hardly a career. Oh, cheers. I didn't mean it like that. I mean, you're a manager, I'm one of the skippy. They could train a chimp to do what I do, Mum. Stop tearing yourself down. If you want to get on, it's up to you, isn't it? You came back from that course buzzing last month. I know, it's just... Well, this thing with Shelley, Mum, it's not me for six. You've got to move on, Lynn. It's the only way. If I knew why she dumped me, maybe I could. Don't pursue it, love, please. For my sake, if nothing else. I know you don't want to see me get hurt, but I need to know. Why? Why is it so important? Because I love her. Is that so terrible? No, it's not. You're always telling me I should go for what I want. Well, I want Shelley. Hang on a sec. Max? Hi. Huh. Didn't notice you there. I'm glad I caught up with you. I'm in court today. Oh, right. Well, uh, good luck with it. Thanks. I just wanted to say I'm really sorry about what's happened. It must be really hard for you and little Harry and Emma. Well, it's not been easy. Um, when's the funeral? I don't know. The funeral director is coming round this afternoon to discuss arrangements. Well, I'd like to come to the funeral too, if that's all right with you. Yeah, of course. Come on, Emily, we really will be late if you don't get a move on. Good luck again, and I meant what I said about court. Susanna, she didn't want you punished. I bet again. Do you think we should see if he's OK? Are you sure you want to go anywhere near that house after, well, you know? I'm fine. Honest. Hiya. Hello. I'm moving back into the house. Oh, right. Well, I thought it was best all round, really, especially for the children. There's no space in that flat. They're lucky to have you. I can't imagine how anyone copes after... Well... Well, I'm just taking it one day at a time, I suppose. Oh, listen, we're just off to the shops, but there's no great rush, is there? No, of course not. Can we give you a hand? Oh, thanks, no, but uh, I'm fine. Oh, at least let's make you a copper. I've still to meet the man who can make a decent pot of tea. Come on. OK. Hi. What do you want? Oh, I was hoping to cheer you up. Oh, yeah. And how are you going to do that? You know what you need, Lindsay? It's a real man. It's no wonder you've been on a little lesbian adventure holiday with all the sad cases you've been out with. I don't care what you think. As far as I'm concerned, all men are the same. You just haven't found the right one yet. You look can't be trusted. And you're a case in point. As soon as Bev's back's turned, you're over here trying it on. And women are so faithful. Yeah, they are. Do you think Max is OK? He's out of shock. No wonder he's a bit weird. Mm. Ted worries about him, though. Yeah, well, that's you all over, isn't it? Always worrying about everyone else and never a thought for yourself. Family trait, if you ask me. You honestly believe that Shelley woke up one morning and decided to dump you out of the blue? I don't know. Talk about naive. So why exactly did she finish with me, then? Do you want me to spell it out? You've got competition. You're lying. Shelley wouldn't go behind my back. She's not like that. You sure? Of course I am. Ask Bev if you don't believe me. I'll do better than that. I'll ask Shelley myself. Hi, ready for the offer? Kind of. Well, don't worry. 
Just stick to what we've discussed. Let me do most of the talking. Should be fine. I'd better introduce myself. I'm um, Emily's mum. Oh, glad you're here. It's important the magistrates see that Emily has her family behind her. How long will we have to wait? Oh, a couple of minutes. Last few cases dragged on, hence the delay. Can we come in with her? Yeah, family's fine, but uh, Ray, you'll have to wait out here. Sorry. He's, a, he's as good as family. But not in the eyes of the court, I'm afraid. It's, it's no bother, honestly. Emily Shadwick? That's us. How are little Harry and Emma? Well, they're with Katrina at the moment. Have you told them about the mum yet? Well, it's not easy. I, I keep waiting for the right moment, but it never seems to come. So you'll be having a home soon, then? Who? Susanna. Do people still do that? In some families, it's traditional to bring the person home. It gives everyone a chance to say goodbye properly. Really? I had my sister Siobhan home before we buried her. I don't know how I'd have gotten through it otherwise. It helps people to come to terms with their loss. Does it? Oh, I know some folk think it's old-fashioned. But I found it a real help. You should think about it. As you will have read in the pre-sentence report prepared by the youth offending team, Emily lost both her father and brother prior to these offences taking place. Given her distressed emotional state and her age, she was easily taken in by the co-accused. Uh, that would be uh, Timothy O'Leary? Ah, uh, yes, Your Worship. The co-accused in this matter, an adult, has made a full and frank admission of his involvement in these offences, acknowledging that he was the primary instigator and that he led Emily. Is there anything you would like to say? Go ahead, love, answer. Yeah. It was all his idea. So, what was all that about earlier? You tell me. Lindsay the Lezzer storming off with a face like a fizz. Looked like he was chatting it up to me. Uh, those Christmas decorations won't put themselves up, you know. Come on, I'll give it a hand. We bought this Christmas tree, law. Uh, there, please, and, uh, and be careful. Cost me a packet. Well? I think I might have been a little bit indiscreet. Well, you didn't tell her about Shelley, I hope. It just slipped out. Lindsay was getting on a high horse about what gits men are. I wasn't intentional, honest. You told her about Mrs X? She was being so bloody sanctimonious. Well, what did you say? Come on, you might as well tell me now. I might have mentioned the fact that Shelley was seeing someone else. But I spared her the grisly details. Only because you don't know any. You know, you fellas are every bit as bad as we are. You can't keep a juicy bit of gossip to yourself for two seconds. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, never mind apologising. There's going to be hell on now the cat's out the bag. You are fine. I'm sure they'd be lenient. I just feel terrible saying them things about Tim. Oh, it was for the best, then. Tim wouldn't want to see you go to prison, either. So what do you think they'll decide? Well, I don't think they'll go for a custodial sentence, if that's what you're thinking. But they might. There's always a possibility with charges like this. What happens if they put me away in one? I don't think I could go. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. I know you. I know. Jackie. Oh, right. Hiya. Hiya. Hey, don't be too long. How is he? It's difficult to tell. He's still a bit distant, like he hasn't taken it all in. I don't think any of us have, really. Anyway, I'm glad I bumped into you. I think I owe you an apology. What for? The way you found out I was pregnant. I was going to tell him myself, but Marty and I decided to keep it quiet in case we jinxed it. Listen, I understand. No apology required. Oh, that's good of you. Like I said, it wasn't intended. Oh, forget it. Do you know, Susanna Dyne has really put things into perspective for me. I start to think about what's important. Like Harry? Oh, I was so mad at her when she wouldn't let me see him, and, and then this happens. You didn't know this was going to happen, though, did you? 
Yeah, but I still feel guilty. Listen, you want to see Harry's the most natural thing in the world. You gave birth to him. Yeah. Well, at least Max should be a lot more reasonable about me having access. Oh, that sounded awful, didn't it? You might want to take it easy with Max, you know. He's still pretty emotional. Yeah, but Harry will be near me more than ever now, especially with his mum gone and everything. You said it. As far as Harry's concerned, Susanna was his mum. Yeah, I know that. But now she's gone, I... You should have had some lunch. That's supper more like it. Oh, don't be soft, Em. What's taking them so long? Just try and relax. There's no point getting yourself all waked up. You don't even know what they're going to say yet. Seeing you're not looking at six months in cell block H. Emily, all I was trying to Will say... Will you two stop bickering? You're not the only ones that are nervous. Poor Ray have wore this carpet down to the concrete by the time we get out of here. Oh, don't worry about me, love. I'm fine. Well, the is, Tom. Maybe you'll know what's going on. What's the hold up? Well, a three-course lunch in all probability. <sighs> That's your for disease. That woman judge was a right now. The wheels of justice grind slowly, I'm afraid. Let's just hope they don't get indigestion. If this is about yesterday, I really don't want to discuss it. That's very convenient. Look, I'm sorry if I upset you, but I... It's not about that. Look, this just isn't a good time, Linz. Oh, got someone hiding in the loo, have we? <sighs> very droll. To be honest, that makes a change. You being honest. But what I was going to say was that I'm pretty tired of going over the same old ground. It's over. End of story. And what story would that be? The load of garbage you fed me or the one about you and the other woman? I think you better come in. Yeah. Mm. OK, then. Draw. That was Max. He's all moved in. She's not coming back, then? No. Do you know what, Lance? Today just gets better and better. I've just landed a 14 to 1 on the race, and now this. Might be just as well you're in the money, then. Why? Well, Max isn't going to keep paying the rent on this place. We're going to have to come up with it ourselves. You what? I've got till the end of the month to find somewhere else. We consider the offences you participated in very serious indeed. The public has a right to protection from such behaviour. The nature of the offences mean that in most cases we would have no option but to impose a custodial sentence. Do you understand that, Miss Shadwick? Yes. We have, however, taken into account the loss of your father and brother, your age, and the fact that you have chosen to cooperate with the police and the courts. In the light of this, we have decided to accept the proposals contained in the report. This means you will be subject to a supervision order. You will also be required to carry out the reparation program detailed in the report, which has been explained to you. Is that it? Yes. But let me emphasize, if you do not cooperate fully with this order, you will be brought back before the court and you may receive a custodial sentence. Yeah. And I'd just like to say I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused. All stand. Oh, thanks for everything. Oh, it was pretty straightforward, really. <laughs> I better go and give Ray the good news. <laughs> now, you must see the YOT worker before you leave for Brussels. Well, it won't be a problem, will it? Well, just make sure you see him before you go anywhere. And I'd like to say thanks and all. Well, I do make most of my money through repeat business, but in your case, I'd like to make an exception. Just doesn't seem fair, though. Tim getting sent to prison and me getting some order. Our, um, Windermere range is very popular. Right. However, for those with less ambitious funeral plans, we do have the, uh, Coniston range. Uh, obviously, the materials are slightly less durable. Well, whatever you think's best. Perhaps I should leave the brochure with you. All right, thanks, yeah. Uh, anything else? Well, there is the matter of clothing. A favourite dress, perhaps something associated with your loved one? Right, well, um, I'll have to go upstairs and have a look. I know this must all be very difficult, but... 
Sometimes it's bringing together all these little details that helps people to come to terms. And you chose to believe Dave Burns. Well, why would he lie? <laughs> because he's a scheming, conniving little moron who'd do anything to stir things up. Yeah, for well, me. maybe I should go and ask Beth. There's no need. It is true, then. Well, not in the way that he made out. You have been seeing someone. <sighs> I really didn't want you to find out this way. Afraid you might hurt me feelings. Don't be like that. Just give me one good reason. Well, things weren't working out between us anyway, Linz. Yeah, they were. Things were great until that other woman came along and ruined it. It's not her fault. Is it serious? I really don't think me giving you the details is going to make it any better for you. Have you slept with her? That's none of your business. I just need to know. OK, yes. We spent the night together. Happy now? on pins. I've got us some champagne. Oh, ma'am, you shouldn't have. Ah, well, it took a week's pension, but it's worth it to have our Emily home safe. Hey, she must be a real asset round here. Oh, she's priceless, all right. You can at least tell me who she is. I've told you it's none of your business. And what's her name? Oh, no, let me guess. But it's something posh, isn't it? That's it, isn't it? I was too common for you. Why are you so wound up about this? Relationships finish all the time. Because you lied to me. But I didn't mean to hurt you. It's a bit late for that. I don't think you'd find out. Well, I have. And I think I'm owed an explanation. There's really nothing to explain. Well, is she older or younger? Or... Older, if you must know. And she's not posh, either. And did she dump a partner to be with you? She's married. Married? Is her husband now? Of course not. How did you meet her? Through a friend. Well, she doesn't sound like such a good catch to me. Older, married. What is the attraction? Actually, I've always been attracted to older women. Far less prone to immature temper tantrums, for one thing. Well, I never had you down as a granny grabber. That must have been my poor. I reckon you had the hots for me, Mum. Hmm. These sausage rolls are lovely, Mum. What are you after? Nothing. But I'm just glad you're managing to get on so well with Margie. I'll get on with everyone, me. Besides, it's her name on the deeds of this place. Oh. You don't miss a trick, do you? Like I've always said, Raymond, shy bairns gets note. You are not going anywhere near that old lady, lads. I'll only be five minutes. Five minutes or five hours? No way. Look, I want to let him know I went on. He'd be worried. Didn't you listen to a word that was said in that course? Course. You could have been jailed. Your whole life would have been ruined and all because of that lad next door. It wasn't his fault. Yeah, the sooner I can get you on that plane, the better. <sighs> but I'm coming back, remember? You might like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Brussels will be buzzing. Well, you never know till you give it a try. Why should I? You can listen here, madam. After all you've put this family through, you are going to do as you're told. Now, you are not to have anything to do with that lad again! Call me when you've made a decision. Yeah, I will. And any questions you might have, don't hesitate. People don't always think of everything at the time. There was one thing. Yeah? Susanna must have taken it off for some reason. And you'd like me to put it back on? It'd mean a lot to me. So there's no hope for us, then? No. At least I know now. I'm sorry if I hurt you. I really didn't mean to. Can't you see you fall for? I've learned that the hard way. I've got to follow my heart, Linz. So you love her, then? 
Well, then I've ever left anyone. I'm gonna carry on sooner. Every chance I get. She's married. And a marriage is nothing more than habit. She deserves something better. You, you mean? We're gonna be together, Lindsay. Whether you like it or not. I thought that I could take Harry off you a couple of days a week. Harry? He hardly knows you. Yeah, but he, he needs to get to know me better now. I just start to get my head around what Shelley said and then I'll find out something else. Right, well, there is another woman. Gone? How do you mean? Put him inside now. No, has she gone to prison? Has she got sent down? She's where you can't get at her. And that's tomorrow with an hour-long special of Brookside at 8. Next up tonight, Penny Mallory looks at an accident black spot in Lincolnshire that desperately needs a safety makeover. Maybe I could give you a hand with something, take some of the pressure off. That's very kind, but I don't want to run out of things to do. Keep them busy. Shall I bring me ironing over? <laughs> it's very kind, but I've got enough on my plate. <sighs> Would it help if I took Harry and Emma off you for a few hours? Might you get sorted out here? No, no, they're booked in at the crash. <sighs> I've been trying to find a photograph of the whole family, but all I can find so far is... Uh, those with the children and those with uh, one of us and the children, so... Oh, they handle it? They know that something's very wrong, but I don't think they understand what. In any case, I don't want to leave them, because this afternoon I've got to go and see Susanna. Well, should I cancel the crash? I could always take them to the park. No, 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 they need familiarity. Uh, they're best off with Katrina. Yeah, but Katrina's got loads of kids to look after. I could concentrate. Well, she knows them better than anybody. Uh, they need continuity. Yeah, well, I'm not offering as a one-off. Things are going to be all over the place for a bit, aren't they? And if the two of them are too much for you, I thought that I could take Harry off you a couple of days a week. Harry? He hardly knows you. Yeah, but he, he needs to get to know me better now. What are you saying? Suddenly promoted from surrogate to mother now that Susanna's out of the way? No, I, I didn't mean that. Well, what did you mean, then? Harry and Emma are our children. They belong to Susanna and me. And now me and the children have got to get used to living our lives without her. That's enough of a challenge. We don't want outsiders coming in and taking over our lives. Demi's going to ask for a CD-ROM thing that you can sing on to, but we haven't even got a computer. So do you think if I ask for a CD-ROM... Kylie, will people... you just stop battering me here? Is that all you and your mates can go on about what you can wheedle out of people for Christmas? Tell you what, love. Wills wants to write to Santa, you know, so why don't you help us after school, eh, and put us all in a letter? Yeah? And, you know, I was thinking it's time we put our tree on. How about you helping with that as well? Yeah? All right, go and get your bag, cos Nan's gonna drop you off today. Go on. I'll take her. Oh, yeah, right, with that gob on, you'll frighten the kids off to death. I'll take her. Some of us are better as I in our troubles than others. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Well, try for her sake. I am trying. Well, try harder. I just start to get my head around what Shelley said and then I find out something else. Right, well. She's been seeing someone. There is another woman. Does CD start with an S or a C? Emily. Emily. Open the window. See, we're neighbours again. Yes, it, it, well, it's for the children. They need to be in their own home. They ah. need to be in their own rooms. Uh, I need to be with them. 
Nice house. Had a lot of work done to it. Especially the garden, yeah. Well, I was gonna come over. Um... <sighs> Can I ask you a favor? Um... <sighs> it's Lisa, she's been on the phone. It's about the restaurant. The, the relief manager, he finishes today and she's asked me to take care. I swore I wouldn't skip in that place again. I mean, you know that restaurant inside out and there's so much else I need to take care of. Yeah, yeah, you must have a lot on. Everything's fallen to you. <sighs> Please, Mick, it needs to be taken care of. Who for? Susanna. Susanna's dead. Yes, I know that. So what good's he gonna do? Well, all right, then do it for the children. Do it for me. I don't know, do it for Lisa. But you think Susanna used me enough when she was alive? Oh, you can't carry that on. Not now, what's the point? Get out! How dare you show your face? I only wanted to see Emily creeping around the back of my house. What were you gonna do, break in? Well, where is she then? That's nothing for you to worry about. She's gone. That's all you need to know. Gone? How do you mean? Come on, Tim, inside now. No, has she gone to prison? Has she got to send down? She's where you can't get at her. Inside, Tim. Get off! So any more robbing and burning cars and stealing credit cards from the dead, you're on your own. Do a nice thing. Come on. <laughs> Haven't you caused enough upset round here? But she's been sent down, Mick. She's gone to prison. What does you expect? You terrorised Susanna, and you're still kicking off all over the place now. I should have been you out of this house ages ago. You what? Somebody was off his head taking you on. He must have been soft. Yeah. Yeah, because you're a freeloading scally. And how did I end up being the one clearing up after you? I pay you keep. You've done well all right out of me, even when I was sleeping in that minty garage. Oh, is that what you did all your planning, was it? In my garage. How to get at Susanna. Rub the car, torch it, send her those disgusting pictures. Go on, then. Rake it all up if it makes you feel any better. You deserve prison, both of you. Emily never. She deserves a second chance. With me? You terrorised an innocent woman! Innocent? Yeah! Oh, get real. You what? You what? Go on, then! Go on! What do I care, anyway? I'm gonna be in prison soon. And then you're gonna have to find another punch bag to take her out on. You might have to start on your Leo. Or don't you hit your own family? Only freeloading scallies. You wanna sort that out? Hiya. Hiya. Busy in there? Don't. I'm exhausted. Oh, well, I'll teach you to get pregnant. I expected a bit of morning sickness, but not this fatigue. I remember how shattered I was when I was pregnant with Harry. Fit for nothing. And I was trying to keep it all a big secret. Did you get over to see Max in the end about Harry? It wasn't about Harry. Like I said, I went over there to offer me help, that's all. I'm sure Max would be glad of it. He must be up the wall at the moment. I wasn't accusing you of anything, you know. After the way I behaved before she died, I wouldn't blame you if you were. But I've well moved on from all that now. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're after the haircut, she's book solid. Well, I was after you, actually. I'll leave you to it. You have moved on, haven't you? Thought you must have disappeared back to Spain. Yeah, well, I've been busy. Oh, busy, right. Look, do you fancy a coffee? Well, I'm working this morning. Oh, right. But I thought I might go for a swim this afternoon. Oh, might yeah. How's your elbow? The elbow? Yeah. I'm sure you said it was your elbow that lost you that race against me. Yeah, well, it's still slowing me down, but I'm sure I'll cope. Call around later then? Yeah. Sound. See you. You have to believe I never wanted to hurt you, Linz. I'm not hearing answers. You can't choose who you fall for, but you can choose who you lie and who you cheat on. I know how it seems, but... I honestly, I don't treat people like this. Obviously. I bet you, Bev and Dave, were sat in that flat having a good old laugh at me. No. You know, my mum was right about you. You are a heartless cow. We should never lay eyes on you, never mind anything else. She said that. Oh, and worse. That was before I told her you're a two-timing bitch. You've told her. This is such a nightmare. Oh, no, she'll stuff you. Do you think I did this on purpose? Woke up one morning and thought, I know, I'll fall for someone else and see just how much I can hurt Lindsay. It just wasn't like that. Well, how was it then? I mean, did you chase her or did she chase you? Nobody chased anybody. It's not even... Well, somebody must have. You don't just wake up and see someone on your doorstep. Who is she? How would it help you to know that? It wasn't her that split us up. It was me. It just made me realise things just weren't right with us, Linz. Well, things were right before she came along and they were more than right. Lindsay, trust me. Trust you. You know, I wouldn't trust you as far as I could throw you. 
Now just get out before I do some damage to that smugub of yours. Go on, get out! Uh, sorry about the mess. I was going to get it sorted. Mm. Makes a change. It's not my stuff making it untidy. Anyway, I've not come over to inspect the house. I've come over to tell you that I'll take care of the restaurant for you. Oh, thank you. You know, that's such a weight off. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know why I was so resistant. I've been lashing out at everything, and it was uh, your turn to get in the way. I know how you feel. Do you, Max? What was the last thing you did to Susanna? Give her down the banks? Did you tell her that you never want to see her again? I want it all to seem petty what you did, but I can't stop being angry that you cheated on me. She was all mixed up. Why did she have to do that, Max? Mess with that doctor. She was rebounding all over. She'd never settled. She was coming round to settling. I think she would have done the right thing in the end. For herself, eventually. For her and the children. But would it have been with me? I bought this frame for Susanna and Sarah. She was in one of her buy me a present or I won't marry you moods. She was going to use it for a wedding photo. Well, if you want it back, I could always find another. No, oh, no. What would I do with it? There was never going to be a wedding, was there, Max? No. I mean, if she'd have died before. Then I'd have been the grieving fiancé. Or if we had ever argued and she'd have died the day after, I'd have been the grieving husband. But now, what am I? What would you prefer to be? I don't know. Why wasn't one of us there, Max? To stop it. Who could have stopped it? It was an accident, you know. It was just one of those things. They just happen. I was ready to spend the rest of my life with Susanna. I loved her, you know. I did. Did? It sounds so final, then. I always loved her. Then. Now. I was always drawn back to her. It was always her. I still love her, Mick. Still. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry about the delay, but Joseph seems to have gone this. Here he is now. Even humble animals. We're drawn to the star. Ready? Oh, get off. So is it me that tempted you over, or the offer of a swim? A swim? I thought I was getting invited back for the jacuzzi. <laughs> yeah, well, that'll depend on how you explain not ringing me. I've uh, been on land duty. Oh, land duty. So she unplugs all the phones, does she? Thought you'd gone off me. You know, after I told you about Harry and that. Yeah, well, could you blame me? I mean, my mother warned me about women like you. One snog and all of a sudden, and loads of babies land on your doorstep. So is that why you've stayed on me way? I told you. I've been seeing me, Nan. I'm not stupid. Look, when I met you in Benidorm, I couldn't believe I'd gone all the way over there to end up meeting the kind of girl I'd always been looking for in Liverpool. Gorgeous, sexy. I was having a laugh with a pile of mad mates. Yeah, well, I am. And then I find out you're driven Liverpool to be some posh snob showcase wife. Yeah, but that was a mistake. Yeah, and then when all that's out the way, you tell me you've been having babies for some woman around here. Well, he's Max's kid. He'd be staying with Max. He hardly even knows me. So you're not going for repossession, then? God, no. What would I do with the kids at this time in my life? Too much to do with my freedom. Yeah, like what? Like get you into my jacuzzi for a start.
Made you some screwing. I'll leave it on there, shall I? Look, this morning, I was out of order. It's you, right? I'm sorry. That's all right, then. They threaten me any time. I spoke to Jesse Shedwick. Apologise for your free-loathing lodger, did you? About Emily. She's not been locked up. She's in Brussels with her ma. Brussels? Hmm. For a few days. Hang on a sec. Brussels and not custody? Yes! Oh, you don't know how good this is. I kept on seeing her in this manky prison cell in bits. I had the well locked up. I know it's been doing your head in. And I shouldn't have kicked off on you like I did. The stuff I said, I just lost it. I'm sorry. You still want me to move out? No, of course I don't. It's not about you, Tim. It's about me. Feeling that I had a new life. A new family. And it got taken away from me. The old ones grown up, or got off. Or in your case, being given down the banks by the neighbors. I didn't mean to make things worse for you, Mick. It's just, I really thought I lost the Mick. I really did. I know, mate. She's through here. Now take as much time as you need. She looks beautiful. You all right, sir? Yeah. Yes, I'm fine. Um, you managed to put the, uh, the, the ring on her finger. Did it uh, fit all right? Yes. You'll see. We're drawn to the star. <laughs> there you are. And I'll put the decorations up when I've done the wallpaper for your granddad. Four rollerblades. You've only got two feet, babes. Can I show a Will's letter? Yeah. It's dead funny. Guess what he wants for Christmas? What? My granddad. <laughs> he insisted. <laughs> Wouldn't let me write anything else. Here's me wrapped up in all my own troubles and you're worried sick about me, Dad. It's all right. Your troubles are in your face all the time, aren't they? Mine are locked up in some Aussie. God love him. In my face, all right. She was in the garage today, rubbing me nose in her. I told you to keep well away from me. I know, and I tried. I just... I just thought it'd be easier if there was another woman involved. You know, that... She wasn't choosing to be with no one over being with me. And it isn't easier. I can't get this woman up me yet. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe she's just saying all these things just to get you off a case. No. It's the truth. It makes sense of it all. I mean, the way she's been with me and why it ended so sudden is... I'm sure it's nothing. Nothing? <sighs> You're choking on and she's told me she's in love with the woman. She said what? Can you call that love? I mean, going behind two people's backs, mine and some cow's husband. How would you know there's a husband? I know she's married. And she's older. <laughs> some lonely, bored, middle-aged housewife who's getting grief off her new mark husband, so she fancies a dabble. <laughs> and all Shelley's principles about how dabble has turned on you eventually. There's no point you building up a story like that. I mean, you're making a mountain out of it. How do I know it isn't a mountain if she won't even tell me about it? I mean, why keep it from me? I'm bound to find out sooner or later someone's gonna let it slip, so why didn't she tell me herself? I'd have had more respect for Shelley if she'd have done that. 
But isn't it better that it comes from the person who's betrayed me than from some flaming gossip in the bar? What now? What now, Susanna? How do I go? Jessica might went today. I was just about to. Look at that hand. Even your dad's getting sheepish. Must be catching. I didn't know who was the biggest star. Him or the one they were all following to Bethlehem. Enjoyed it, did you, Mum? I told you I did. What about you, Dad? Did you? Me? I was never even there. Knows me, Mum. I was. I was front row. You saw me, Anthony. Yeah, fast asleep I did. I saw most of it, love. Not my bit, you didn't. I'm sure your mum didn't do it on purpose. Might as well even not a come. Hey, don't cheek your mother. I'm sorry, OK? Your mum can't help getting tired. It's the baby. Baby, I know. It's already causing trouble. I hate it. That's enough of that, young man. You apologise, Anthony. Soz. Say it properly. I'm sorry! <sighs> Sir? I do apologise. I'm, uh, I'm coming now. We need to get things organised. Well, of course, if you'd like to come this way, we can talk about the arrangements. Yeah, as soon as possible. I'm sure we can find a date next week that would be convenient. Oh, no, no, no. Sooner, sooner, no. She's all alone here. Uh, you'll find that people do need a bit of notice. Oh, what have other people got to do with this? But surely there are friends and relatives that will want to come to the funeral. Funeral? I'm not talking about a funeral. I'm sorry. What arrangements did you mean? <laughs> My wife needs to be with her family, where she belongs. Not in a strange place like this. So, I'm going to take her home as soon as possible. Vince, will you sit down? I want to talk to you, you know, about this other woman that you reckon Shelley's seeing. I don't reckon, I know. And I know what you're going to say. That there's no point torturing myself that I should just let go. But you don't understand how I feel. I understand enough. You went in on the good times, Mum. You've only known about it since it's gone wrong. Shelley was the best thing that ever happened to me. She changed me and I... I'm not just talking about... You know, the sexuality stuff. I started to believe in myself again. You know, cos when I met Shelley, everybody was against me. You know, with all the drugs business. I'm starting to think all that drugs business was better than this. At least you could turn your back on all that. How can you say that? Would you rather I was mixing with all the local drug dealers than, than happy and in love? All I'm saying is that woman is screwing your head up. Shelley? Nah, it isn't Shelley that's screwing me head up. It's that other woman. She's the one that's ruined things between me and Shelley, and I promise you one thing, Mum. I'm going to find out who the cow is. Lindsay. I'm not going to give up without a fight, Mum. And I swear to God, when I find out who she's been seeing, I'm going to kill her. I thought that I would take Harry off here a couple of days a week. Harry? He hardly knows you. Yeah, but he, he needs to get to know me better now. I just start to get my head around what Shelley said, and then I find out something else. That one? There is another woman. Gone? How do you mean? Not him inside now. No, has she gone to prison? Has she got sent down? She's where you can't get at her. And that's tomorrow with an hour-long special of Brookside at 8. Next up tonight, Penny Mallory looks at an accident black spot in Lincolnshire that desperately needs a safety makeover.